Hey everyone, um, I want to take some time right now to um, read a little bit of uh, Walt Whitman's Song of Myself with you. Uh, this is the reading passage that you're going to be using for your assignment um, for, uh, for today's class. So as you are listening, I would say have your copy of the text out in front of you so you can mark your copy, just like I'm going to be marking mine. Um, and then hopefully this helps as you are completing the assignment to make some of it make a little bit more sense um, as we go. So, follow along. I celebrate myself and sing myself. Right, it's called Song of Myself, so there you go. And what I assume you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me, as good belongs to you. So Whitman is really concerned here with this notion of connectedness, that every creature, every living um, being is connected with this sort of shared position in the cosmos, basically. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a sphere of summer grass. Who's going to consider nature. My tongue, every atom of my blood, formed from this soil, this air, born here of parents, born here from parents the same, and their parents the same. I now, 37 years old, in perfect health begin, hoping to cease not till death. So he's talking, right, about connectedness between living beings, he's talking about nature, and then, right, formed from this soil. So he's also talking about his connection to nature. Creeds and schools in abeyance. If you don't know that word, it's not a word people use very often, right? That means temporary suspension. So basically, all of these things are going to come to a stop. Retiring back a while sufficed at what they are, but never forgotten. I harbor for good or bad. I permit to speak at every hazard. Nature without check, with original energy. Again, he's turning to nature, right? He's focused on nature. He's going to let nature talk and nature share its ideas. Now we skip. You'll notice here that there are these numbers, right? These are the, the chunks in the text. The original song of myself is very long, and you're just getting excerpts from it. There's going to be a little skip here down to section six. A child says, what is the grass? Fetching it to me with full hands, how could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess it may be the flag of my disposition out of hopeful green stuff woven. Again, connection to nature, right? The grass is part of him. Or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift and remembrancer, designedly dropped, bearing the owner's name some way in the corners, that we may see and remark and say, whose? So this is some connection to religion. Um, certainly for Whitman, he was not a follower of traditional uh, Christianity, but, but there is religion worked into his um, into his ideas, right? This idea of, of sort of the presence of God in nature and that sort of idea. What do you think has become of the young and old men? And what do you think has become of the women and children? They are alive and well somewhere. The smallest sprout shows there is really no death. Right? We've got rebirth, new beginning, And when you see a new life, how could you believe in death, is what he's saying. And if ever there was, it led forward life. And if ever there was, it led forward life, and does not wait at the end to arrest it, and ceased the moment life appeared it. So basically saying that, like, death is, death is just part of life, and the beginning of life, because as one ends, the next begins, and, you know, the circle of life, that whole idea. Feel free to sing on your own. All goes onward and outward. Nothing collapses. And to die is different from what anyone supposed and luckier. Hmm, wonder what he means by that. How was it luckier to die? I bet he's going to tell us. 
The big doors of the country barn stand open and ready. The dried grass of the harvest time loads the slow-drawn wagon. The clear light plays on the brown, gray, and green intertinged. Inter the armfuls are packed to the sagging mow. All right, so this is a scene from some farming. Again, remember he's been talking about new life, and nature. Farming very much represents this to Whitman because every year there's a new harvest and more life that comes from the farm. Okay. I am there. I help. I came, stretched it off the load. I felt its soft jolts, one leg reclined on the other. I jump from the crossbeams and seize the clover and timothy and roll head over heels and tangle my hair full of wisps. The wild gander leads his flock through the cool night. Yonk, he says, and sounds it down to me like an invitation. Right, wild gander is a goose. Oops. Okay. The perk may suppose it meaningless, but I listen close for it, its purpose and place up there towards the wintry sky. Saying some people probably don't pay any attention to the sound that geese make, but that he listens because he knows that it matters. The sharp hoofed moose of the north, the cat of the house sill, the chickadee, the prairie dog, the litter of the grunting sow as they tug at her teats, the brood of the turkey hen, and she with her half spread wings. I see in them and myself the same old law. Right. So this is talking about, again, definite theme here, right? Connection between the speaker, Whitman in this case, and nature. From the press of my foot to the earth springs a hundred affections. They scorn the best I can do to relate them. I am enamored of growing outdoors, outdoors nature of men that live among cattle or taste of the ocean or woods, of the builders and steerers and ships and the wielders of axes and mauls and the drivers of horses. I can eat and sleep with them week in and week out. So basically he's saying he really likes people who work out in like these sort of like, you know, jobs in nature. He really admires them and their sort of connectedness with the land. So admires. They are connected with the land. What is commonest, cheapest, nearest, easiest is me. Me going in for my chances, spending for vast returns, adorning myself to bestow myself on the first that will take me, not asking the sky to come down to my goodwill, scattering it freely forever. These are really the thoughts of all men in all ages and lands. They are not original with me. They are not yours as much as mine. They are they're not yours as much as mine. They are nothing or next to nothing. So this is again back to that idea of connectedness, right? In the very beginning, he talks about everyone sharing the same atoms, right? These are the thoughts of all men. So back to connectedness with other people. If they are not the riddle and the untying of the riddle, they are nothing. If they are not just as close as they are distant, they are nothing. This is the grass that grows wherever the land is and the water is. This is the common air that bathes the globe. Again, I keep saying it, it's about connection, right? A lot about connection. The past and present wilt. I have filled them, emptied them, and proceed to fill my own next fold of the future. Listener up there, what have you to confide to me? Look in, the, in my face while I snuff the sidle of evening. Talk honestly, no one else hears you, and I stay only a minute longer. Do I contradict myself? And he's talking to you, right? He says, listener up there, that's you, that's us, we're listening to him. Do I contradict myself? Very well, then I contradict myself. I am large, I contain multitudes. 
right? So it is possible for a person to exist and contradict themselves. This is a, I would say, famous quote of, of Whitman that you might encounter. You may have heard this one before, right? The idea that you are large, and you contain multitudes. I concentrate toward them that are nigh. I wait on the door slab. Who has done his day's work? Who will soonest be through with his supper? Who wishes to walk with me? And so he wants to be connected with you also. So he wants to be connected with his reader. He wants to come and talk with you. Will you speak before I am gone? Will you, will you prove already too late? The spotted hawk swoops by and accuses me. He complains of my gab and my loitering. I too am not a bit tamed. I too am untranslatable. Right, so you can't understand him, right? He, Whitman, he is untranslatable. I sound my barbaric yawp over the rooftops of the world. The last scud of day holds back for me. It flings my likeness after the rest and true as any on the shadowed wilds. It coaxes me to the vapor and the dusk. I depart as air. I shake my white locks at the runaway sun. I effuse my flesh in eddies and drifted in lazy jags. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. Right, this is death, right? He is saying that as he ends, that is what will become of him. And he's okay with that, right? If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. That he will become part of the land and that that is as it should be. You will hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you nevertheless and filter and fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me one place, search another. I stop somewhere waiting for you. So bottom line here, right? Even after death, he is still present because he remains present in nature, right? This connectedness, everything is part of nature. Even after you die, you remain part of nature. And that is, that's his sort of idea of what will happen after he dies. So those are just a few little snippets of Song of Myself, if you like that. <laughs> there is a lot more, um, but uh, that's what the textbook con contains. So that's the part that we're gonna read of it. Um, and from this, you can go on and do uh, your questions and your assignment and then go with it. Thanks, you guys.